My name is Matt Mondes. I'm with IBM's Washington System Center, and this is going to be a short introduction to OpenShift and what OpenShift is and why organizations might want to think about running OpenShift on IBM Z and Linux One. First of all, what is OpenShift? We're talking about OpenShift Container Platform and it is the enterprise hybrid cloud Kubernetes platform that can run on multiple different architectures, including IBM Z. OpenShift is centered around Kubernetes, which Red Hat takes and then includes hundreds of fixes to security, performance, and other issues that exist in the upstream Kubernetes. So Red Hat is really trying to work on hardening Kubernetes to make it more enterprise ready. OpenShift includes uh, an operating system called Red Hat Enterprise Linux CoreOS, and uh, OpenShift supports Cryo and Docker container runtimes. Looking at the stack here, um, you see that OpenShift or OCP runs on all these different platforms, including public clouds like AWS, Azure, Google, and IBM Cloud. OpenShift also runs on private cloud platforms, including x86 Intel, IBM Power, and IBM Z. If we move up to the next level, the operating system, I mentioned CoreOS, uh, which is essentially a deviation of Red Hat Enterprise Linux that was designed specifically for container workloads. It's immutable, and it can do things like receive over-the-air updates, and basically you're not supposed to touch it. The good thing is CoreOS comes as part of OpenShift. And then on top of that is Kubernetes, which I talked about. Kubernetes is really the core technology that most cloud platforms are built around, and that's true for OpenShift too. Kubernetes is, or it was originally a open source project from Google that is for deploying, scaling, and managing containerized applications. And the basic idea is you want to set a desired state for your applications, such as a number of pods running them or a number of resources or CPU or memory that your applications are using. And Kubernetes takes care of everything to meet that state that you're setting. So like I said, this was originally a Google project before they open sourced it. And anything that runs on Google.com uses Kubernetes. So obviously it's great at scaling and managing a whole bunch of applications. OpenShift Container Platform includes different solutions for different tasks, such as an integrated container registry, a software-defined network, monitoring and logging, role-based access control, and everything else that an organization would need in order to have an enterprise container platform for development of cloud applications and also the management of those cloud and container-based workloads. OpenShift is mainly Kubernetes with a bunch of other packages and tools wrapped around it with a bunch of usability and uh, you know, validated integrations between each component. So one of those things is automated operations. When somebody starts thinking about cloud and Kubernetes and containers, a lot of people immediately start thinking about development of applications and DevOps pipelines and things like that. But OpenShift also has a lot of functionality that makes the lives of operations and administrative people a lot easier. Um, and this is something that's growing in focus with every OpenShift version and update that is coming out through the form of operators. Automated operations or operators are essentially a custom type of Kubernetes controller. They run continuously and they automate the installation update and lifecycle management of containerized applications. And there are operators for all types of different things from Red Hat applications to third-party solutions to open source projects. Uh, and at the very top of the, the stack, we have the application level things like the software, the middleware, the developer tools, and all of the great things that you want OpenShift to actually run. So that's the high level view of the OpenShift solution. So under the hood, OpenShift is a collection of open source software. Red Hat takes all of these different open source projects that you see on the left side of the screen here, and Red Hat packaged them all together and added all the functionality that I talked about earlier, including command line, a GUI, all types of validated integrations between each component, and they end up with OKD. OKD is the upstream open source version of OpenShift that organizations can play around with, install for free, and see if they like it. 
and when an organization wants to move into production with full support and service and high availability and everything that you need in production like that, it becomes OpenShift Container Platform or OCP. So I mentioned earlier in the presentation that OpenShift can run on multiple different platforms, including public clouds like IBM Cloud, AWS, Azure, and Google, as well as on-premises platforms such as Intel, x86, IBM Power, and IBM Z. So the question arises, why would an organization want to run OCP or OpenShift on IBM Z rather than any of the other commodity platforms that might have a lower upfront cost? One of the main reasons we see clients doing this is for data gravity. Data gravity is a common term these days that is used to describe the idea of bringing applications onto the platform where your data is stored rather than taking data off of the platform to be used in cloud-based applications elsewhere. So this co-location of data and workloads together leads to ultra low latency. And since we're talking about IBM Z and Linux One, applications running uh, right next to their data can take advantage of the extremely high performance processors, IO and cache. The next point, IBM Z and Linux One have an enterprise class infrastructure that is perfectly suited for container and Kubernetes architecture. The IBM Z infrastructure is uniquely able to dynamically scale. It can scale horizontally by adding additional Linux guests, and it can scale vertically by adding resources to existing Linux guests. And it can do both of those without disruption and without the need to take down the entire cluster and being able to do so within a single server footprint. So this scalability becomes more and more important as time goes on and organizations continue to move workloads to OpenShift and Cloud Pack environments. IBM Z has unmatched levels of security, compliance, and uptime. So our platform is designed to stay up with five nines or better of uptime. And IBM Z has a storied history of security and compliance standards that are increasingly important for organizations who might have some reservations about moving business critical applications to the cloud. An additional reason why organizations might want to do OpenShift on Z rather than another architecture is because of this isolation mechanism called projects. Projects are a concept in OpenShift that are built on a Kubernetes concept of a namespace. And a lot of people look at these as a security mechanism where you can trust that the users or the groups in one namespace or project are going to be completely separated from the users and groups in another project or namespace. And they look at this as a way to provide security to whatever workloads and data are running in one versus another. This is not the case, really. OpenShift was originally developed on Intel x86 and x86 was not designed to have this level of multi-tenancy with separate users and separate namespaces built into the hardware. So if we compare that to IBM Z, the, the Z platform and the Z hardware were designed to completely separate op shared objects such as processors, IO, and memory. So you can do logical isolation with projects and namespaces and get true security between each namespace and project. Whereas if you wanted to do that same thing and have the same level of security on x86, you would need to have more separate hardware for each tenant. This is especially important for clients who are regulated by things like GDPR and HIPAA. Another reason to run OpenShift on Z is to take advantage of not only the capabilities of Linux on Z, but also ZOS. So the IBM ZOS Cloud Broker allows OpenShift to discover ZOS services through ZOSMF and deploy and manage them from within the OpenShift console. And this is a very helpful solution for developers who might not have the skills to take advantage of ZOS themselves or use a green screen or use TSO or anything like that, but they want to use something like DB2 on ZOS as a backend for their new cloud native application that they're also developing within OpenShift. So the ZOS Cloud Broker allows them to do that without ever needing to touch a green screen or ask a DB2 sysproc to do it for them. 
um, this is a pretty powerful offering that ties not just the Z platform to running Linux on Z into the cloud ecosystem, but also ZOS. So what we're looking at now is IBM's vision of hybrid cloud, and that includes Z and ZOS. This is a picture that we're growing towards with each release of OpenShift, um, where organizations will be able to have an environment that has all these different pieces running their workloads under OpenShift and CloudPack for multi-cloud management together, um, whether they're on ZOS, Linux on Z, uh, with KVM or ZVM, HyperProtect services like the HyperProtect virtual servers, or in Intel or Power on-premises, and also tying that together with the public cloud, whether that's IBM Cloud or any other third parties. This has been an introduction to OpenShift on IBM Z and Linux One. If this was interesting to you and you'd like to get your hands on OpenShift running on IBM Z, check the description for a link to our wildfire workshops. These are free of charge and we'd be happy to see you there.